Jen Ackers used to call this part of the guitar the dusty end. The dusty end. No one goes up there. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking like in advance because like the notes that should be up here, we're gonna use to, to trigger samples oh, and, yeah. and grooves and these kinds of things that right. come on the computer. Because yeah, who's gonna do it up here? Now? So. Well, it's a really good idea. That's for sure. I'll try. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. You. You have to find what works for you. Um, people, a lot of people like Stephen Bennett and James Taylor, guys who get a great acoustic sound, a lot of them do it with the acrylic nails. Right. Right. right, right. And uh, I know I've seen James's hand up close, and he has big, thick nails, right? Okay. So I'm trying to get that sound without using the nail. Okay. You understand? Okay. So I try to match the sound of a tortoiseshell pick with the callus on my hand, so right. that's what I try to do. And when I'm playing a fingerstyle song, it's important for me that the melody rings out and has a, yes. has a life of its own. Right. Yeah. So that and that. And, and so um, you have a slight angle in there. Yeah, um, basically my thumb is, is level, and it's not that way, yeah. it's that yeah. way, you see that? Yeah. So it's almost, I, it, it's in line with the string. Chet Acker's arrangement of uh, Bye Bye Blackbird. That's the sound of my calendar. So, okay. I don't know, uh, yeah. uh, and, I, and I can't play, you know, the... <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound any good. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, uh, uh, you know, the way things are going in, in music, people are focusing on all the wrong things, and that's where the problem lies. People are focusing on fame and fortune, and that will get you nowhere. What you need to be focusing on is getting good. That's what you need to focus on. And, and, and when that happens, everything you need will, will, will come to you, but you've got to stay true to your, your, your gift and not focus on the wrong things. Um, and, you know, you can make a good living playing in, in music. The other thing is, is that the main message that people get these days is that everything happens so quickly, and that's not, not reality. Reality is, you've got to start small and work up, you know? Uh, we were talking about this yesterday, because I just played, I think, three or four concerts in a row that were all sold out in Germany and we were so thrilled we had a lot of people and I said well you know what I remember the first time I played here there were 50 people at my show you know I don't forget that because that was a long time ago but you know it, it's not a matter of well uh, uh, you know I expected it to grow quicker I, I didn't expect it uh, anything but exactly what I what I got I expected that if I did a good job the first time, when I come back the second time, there better be more people. And when I come back the third time, there better be a lot more people. You know what I mean? And you've got, that's the way you've, you've got to look at it. If you want to have a career and, a, and a, make a living playing music, you've got to really be willing to, to get out there and, and work hard. Yeah, and will some pickers take over the world at some point? Oh, they already are. They're everywhere. Uh, Russia, Germany, uh, um, China, Japan, Taiwan, everywhere I go, there are players playing Merle Travis's music. The thing about Merle Travis's music is it doesn't matter whether the audience has heard it or not. The moment you launch into a Travis tune, the crowd just light up. Yes. Yeah, you watch tonight when I, when I play a Merle Travis tune, the audience will go crazy. It's so orchestral and opens up so, like yeah. the, the guitar as a band. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. It's just so beautiful. Right? Yeah. And your approach to personal composition, does that just come to you? Do you just... Uh, oh, no, I use every skill that I could possibly muster up. Every bit of 
the craft of songwriting I use. I do not think like a guitar player. I think like a, a singer. When I'm, when I'm composing a song, I try to think like a singer and a band and the whole thing. I try to visualize the, the whole song. Um, and I don't let my hands and my, my instrument dictate to, to me. I try to get out of it what I want. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. I try to be the driver of the ship. Right. Um, and it's all about the melody and the groove of the, of the song and what it's saying to you, you know? Like, you know, uh, a song like uh, uh, Ruby's Eyes. Uh, oh, that's the, 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 so, so it's, it's, yeah. it reminds me of Moonraker. That's where it came from. That, 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 yeah, those right. two chords. Where are right. And then there's like an F, F sharp minor or something. Yeah. Well, I saw Moonraker and heard that chord. That's and because of that chord, chord, I wrote Ruby's Eyes. That, really? That's right. Okay. Yeah, so. So, Ben, you put the chords with it. Yes. Now it's telling us something. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. the, therein lies the magic of, of, of songwriting is when, the, when you get the melody with the right chords and vice versa, it's, it's, it's magical. Um, I, you know, I'm 57 years old and I feel 21, you know, in my body. And I, I wake up in the morning and I, I run around like a kid. I feel so good. I, I hope it continues. Yeah. Like, um, my wife and I are, are starting a company in Luxembourg because yeah. I don't want to go the traditional academic route, so to speak. And since she's a botanist, we're sort of combining musical education with nature. I ah. want to get the kids outside again, the Venetar, the fire, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Two last questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is, do you see a difference between um, us as entertainers and musicians? Is there... It's all, all, I've always thought of myself as a guitar player who, um, I, I'm here to entertain people and I use anything I can to give people a great time. I bang my head on the microphone, I bang it with a brush, I play the guitar like a drum, um, I try to write songs that sound like you can almost hear the words in your head. And sometimes and, something like that yeah. will make us weep, actually. Yeah. And, that's... and that's all part of, of a moving experience. So when you go to the stage, remember you're in the entertainment business and people, people need to be touched and moved and and uh, you know, and so uh, another question that came mm -hmm. up also was, um, do you have any guitar-related injuries? I mean, you play so often, mm -hmm. and you you um, seem to be driving yourself with such dedication that the question was, yeah, um, I have sometimes students that say, yeah, sometimes left hand starts to begin to hurt, and I find it a very difficult. Nearly every night, somebody asks me about. Um, repetitive strain or carpal tunnel or something, I never, ever have a problem with my hands. Okay. Because I never strain, ever. I, 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 I think a lot of people fight the instrument and there's where the problem lies. First of all, they don't, they don't know to get the guitar set up so it's beautiful to play. Yeah. You know, I, I want the guitar that I can play it all day and all night and never never get sore from it and never want to put it down, you know. So get your guitar set up so it's beautiful to play and that will, that will help you. Um, uh, I, I practice uh, and I, I, never, I never push too hard. Even like sometimes when I'm on stage and I really get into it when I'm playing like guitar boogie and stuff, absolutely I'm getting into it yeah, big, big time. But I have a lot, I have a lot in reserve. I, I, I'm I'm still got a long way to go. When I when I look like I'm at the end, I have a long way to go because I know how to pace myself. And um, um, that's an important thing that you learn. Well, I think so. Years. You know, mm -hmm. and um, with music programs being scrapped from a lot of schools in this region, what are your what are your thoughts yeah. on, on that? Because it's all moving towards arguments like, well, you know, they have to be prepared for proper jobs and mm -hmm. all of this kind of thing. Well, and so. The bottom line is, 
if someone is gifted, it doesn't matter what you do to them, they're going to win anyway. That gift will win through. True. Sure. Yeah. So, what I did, and what I still do, to make practice interesting for me is I play songs. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, I try to learn new songs, new licks, new ideas, uh, and I get together with other players as often as I can. Um, but I have no set routine, but I'm very dedicated. Like, uh, I go through periods of practicing strength and endurance, right. you know, like taking my, my hands to the gym, you know, okay. and I play Cannibal Rag, uh, Merle Travis tune, over oh and over and over until I'm sweating, you know. <laughs> and and, have you ever had periods like that where you would just cordon yourself off for a couple of weeks in your oh, life and sure, just, I've and done just, it all my just life. do that, um, you know, every day as, as, as many hours as I, as I, I practice when I, I, these days, because I play concerts nearly every night, and I play a lot, I play two hours with everything I got. Right. You do that, you'll be exhausted at the end. You don't need to be playing 10 hours a day. You need to be having a life, but you, but you also need to be dedicated. When, I, when I'm not practicing and I'm jamming and playing with other players, sometimes we just play the whole day. You know, the whole day will go and you'll, you will have been playing all day. Right, right. You know, when I get together with Richard Smith or Frank Vignola or or oh, uh, Stockler wow. Rosenberg and I love to play tunes together. And um, yeah, know. that's extraordinary when you do work with those kinds oh. of guys. It's, those and I learn so much from those guys. I I really do, and it's great. No, it's really younger always, people. Yeah. What younger people need to do is they need to work on on all sorts of abilities, right? They need to work on their technical ability, their skills, motor skills, but they need to work on a repertoire. They need to get songs together that are interesting um, and songs that, uh, that keep them interesting, uh, and keep them interested in what they're doing. Because in, in actual fact, uh, it's music itself that inspires us. So when we hear a song that, that really lifts us up and that, that drives us crazy, well, first thing we want to do is try and work out how to play it. And there is the inspiration right there. You know? Right. It's the only way I'm true to myself, because I can't be anything else but what I, what, what, who I truly am when I walk on stage. And if I'm in a, if I'm in a funny mood, I'll, I'll be funny all night. If I'm not in a funny mood, or if, if I just, sometimes I have nights where I don't say much, and it's not. It's not that there's something wrong. It's just that tonight I'm, I just don't feel like talking. You know, it's always it's always honest. No matter what you get, every time you see me play, it'll always be honest. I can guarantee you that. And now the last and impossible silly question. Okay, here if we you go. Took one chord, if you had to take one chord onto a lonely island yeah. and live the rest of your life, it would be this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. The, the last chord on the lonely island. <laughs> uh, what's your desert island album? Desert island album? Wow. Mm. That's a hard one. Oh, oh, Moon River? Yeah, Moon River. Oh, I love that, that song. That really went so deep. You did something completely else. You brought the cowboy back into that song. That was so... Mm -hmm. That was so... Mm -hmm. The version, there's two versions on the uh, Little by Little album, and the uh, the one I did with Rick Price, the singer, mm -hmm. that was 
that was my Gretsch Synchromatic F-hole jazz guitar, just with a mic on it. And the other one, with uh, Victor Wooten playing bass and everything, that was a, uh, a, a beautiful guitar uh, made by a brilliant uh, guitar builder, Wayne Henderson. And, uh, and I had big strings on that guitar and tuned it down its own. So when I play in C, I'm actually uh, in um, B flat. Yeah, so it sounds d deeper and lower. But we, we were just messing around with it, and I said, come and take a song by Victor. And, right. and then we ended up re you know, pushing the red button, and we got it first take. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. You're welcome, brother. Okay, thanks so much.